Strike Freedom Gundam. Hey, what's up, everybody? Robert184 Gundam.tk. Thanks for being here to take a look at the SD Super Deformed Strike Freedom Gundam, arguably the lead Gundam from Gundam Seed Destiny. This kit came out in 2006 and sells for 600 yen. Surprisingly good gimmicks for a kit this price, so you're able to have him in full burst mode with pretty much everything shooting out there. Also, you can have the rail guns or the gray ones here swing out to the waist, and you can also have them go back so that you can put the beam rifles on the hips instead. You also are able to put the beam rifles into the double beam rifle, and you can put the shield on there as well. The wings open up so you can get the full Dragoon effect. However, you may think the Dragoons look really good there because they're painted by a pro, but Bandai is good enough to give you two images here that clearly show how this is going to look right out of the packet, and they say, hey, it still looks good right out of the box. Now, that's something that I sort of disagreed with, and so I put in a little bit of effort to improve it from what you're going to see here. Also, this custom SD base is not included. That's saying there that it comes with the Force Impulse Gundam sold separately. Inside the manual, though, you've got some cool cover art, and when you flip that open, you'll see that this came with two high-grade plates, you can say, so four SD size plates, and it's going to come with gold poly caps, which uh, are not quite as gold as you'd like them to be, but again, something that's fixable. After you go through that, you've got four pages of instructions, very easy to put together, and then in the back, it shows how to deploy the dragoons. On the back, even though they've already sold you the kit, again, it's showing off some of the gimmicks. The fact that the elbows can move fairly independently, you can put the double beam rifles together, full burst mode, and you can have him looking quite angelic there, getting ready to go. Also depicts the weapon in the chest as well. The beam saber here is painted by a pro, as is the beam shield, and then you've got a photograph and a color paint guide on the back, and it really does look good when it's painted like this. Lots of stickers here, which you can use or paint to your heart's content. Red parts for the waist section, shoulders, the front of the chest, the beam shield generators on the sides. Then you're going to get Vs for the fins themselves. You're also going to get some parts again for the forearms and blue parts for the camera lenses. Now, because I did some painting, I mutilated these plates pretty much because I painted all the parts in the regular Gundam 4 colors just right on the plates themselves. So straight to a look at the completed model, and you can see that this one is going to be quite different from it would be if it wasn't painted. So just to give you an idea of some of the things that were done, uh, this whole back part should be all dark blue, but again, I painted these blue parts on there after putting some white uh, undercoat on there. The shield as well, I just painted some very light blue. It's white naturally, so just a little bit of blue, and along with this, a little bit of red here on the beam saber just gives the impression that you've got that beam effect there. And otherwise, the big thing that I did is you can see that there are stickers for the gold parts on the Vs, but the most important part for me was to get the gold on things like the hands and the elbows and on the chest there. So by getting the gold paint from either you can use a gold Gundam marker just like this, or you can just use some gold spray paint and you can really bring out this Gundam's appeal. Just for comparison, here's a shot of him with the wings closed up and everything down in a more regular kind of non full burst mode pose. Height comparison's always a little funny with SDs, but here you've got the head of the double Oquanta. I guess it depends on how you position the legs exactly. Just a little bit higher than Strike Freedom, although with the V fins on, they're not all that different. To talk about the parts and posability from bottom to top, you've got the ankles there. The legs are very, very simple with just a little bit of red paint on there. And you can bend them around so you're going to have a lot better mobility than you would on any of the old SD Gundams. But it's the waist that really gets most of the attention here for the Strike Freedom. So if you get these out of the way, again, you can bring these cannons forward and back but you're also able to pop them out and slide them into the back. And then you'll notice that you get a ugly colored poly cap there that you can then take the beam rifles and plug those in and hang them off the hips or have these come out. Again, these are painted gray, so they're not something that's gonna look like that right out of the box. That's painted gold, but I was lazy and I used seals for the red. So you've just got a red sticker here over this part and up here on the shoulders as well. For the elbows themselves, they're able to rotate all the way around here, and they bend up not quite 90 degrees, so you're only going to get about 60 there. This is just a red sticker on here, and this is a blue sticker which is going to pop up all the time. 
The manipulators are just one piece, so if you do want to differentiate between the white and the gold, you're going to have to paint that yourself or tape that off. And the head itself does a very good job of looking Strike Freedom-ish. Of course, it would be nice if some, with something like some of the double, newer 00 kits that you actually get that separate gray piece underneath. They didn't do that, although if you got in there with a paintbrush, I'm sure you could fix that up. Little bit of lining in there, some blue stickers, including a very small one up here for the second camera lens. Put some line in the Vulcans, but the head, which is the most important part of an SD Gundam, really pulls it off here. The Dragoons on the backpack here are able to bend up and down like that, and as well they're able to rotate fairly well around here, so you're going to get be able to have them go whooshing into the background as he flies, not just fully spread, full burst style. In terms of movement though, only this part is going to move. This front one is actually locked into place, so don't expect to do too much with that. But what you can do is open this part up, and you can open this part up as well. So if you position those, you can get a somewhat pleasing effect with the Dragoons. Here's a shot of the weapons, which should be all white. Again, a little bit of tape on this beam saber and a light, just random spray of red and some random spray of blue. You can still see that there's a lot of white exposed underneath that. But when you add the red seal on, for whatever reason, it ends up looking okay. The beam rifles, on the other hand, for Strike Freedom, have a lot of intricate color work, and that's the kind of thing where the Master Grade even has trouble bringing it off. The Perfect Grade does not, but in this case you're just going to get monocolor. So I painted those white, and uh, I didn't go very deep just to leave some of the lining. If you wanted to touch that up with a brush, I'm sure you can make them look quite good, but I'm going to use the Beam Saber most of the time. But in terms of gimmicks, you can have them both shooting off this way, but you'll notice that there's a peg there, and if you plug that in here on the underside of the beam rifle. Plug that in, then you're able to get the beam rifle with this big ugly half exposed. So something that you're probably not going to want to do all that often. Some final thoughts here as he spins around in another variation of the many poses that he can do actually for a kit this size. So first the negatives. I think if you were a kid and you saw Seed Destiny and you thought Strike Freedom was the greatest thing since sliced bread, you'd probably be disappointed if only because Bandai, despite the fact that they gave blue parts, did not give blue parts for the Dragoons. And I know that would have been an extra eight parts and it's already got four SD plates. But that's something that I think as a kid picking this up in a supermarket, they would be pretty disappointed. So a little bit of paint can bring that out, but otherwise, that's probably my biggest knock against this kit. But then again, if that's my biggest knock against this kit, and it's something that's fairly easily remedied if you've got a blue spray paint can, or you're good with brushes, uh, that's not bad. So again, you can just add a little bit of color, the gold on the inner frame, or which parts are exposed in the poly caps, a little bit of blue paint on the shield, and red on the beam sabers and a little bit of gray on these rail cannons on the side. I really gotta look up what those are. And for me, this goes from being just a $6 kit to actually being something that I think looks pretty good in a lot of poses and is something that because it's got that gold bling factor and the head really captures the feel of the anime, that this kit is a winner for me. As the Quanta joins in the fun, what do you guys think about this SD kit? How does it stack up compared to some of the other ones that you've built? In terms of playability, I think it's just got a lot of gimmicks that somebody of a younger age who was putting this together would probably be pretty happy, and like I said, a little bit of work just makes it all that much more enjoyable. So what do you guys think about the kit, the video, anything? Let me know with a comment down below. Stay tuned for more Strike Freedom goodness, and as always everybody, Robert184, Gundam.tk, thanks for watching. See you next time with more reviews. You know, not to be that guy who brings us up all the time, but I saw that both you and Destiny made the cover of G-Generation World.